Welcome. Today is episode two, and we're having a great lineup today. Uh, we have a guest. We have two guests, actually, who's going to be doing um, and sharing their experiences both in and outside of the classroom, how they connect, what we're learning, uh, talking to us about what's going on in industry, what's that path that we are taking, or we, can we follow from those who have already uh, walked before us. But before we do that, we're going to have a warm up. As you know, in our content, soft skills are very important. You cannot persuade others to buy your product, to invest in you without humanistic skills, without these soft skills that make you approachable, to be able to communicate your ideas, and to uh, build those resources, both human resources, capital resources, to, to uh, aggregate, to move your idea, to scale your idea, to uh, be able to conquer the world. So before we move to our guest alumni, I would like to introduce a colleague of mine who I've had the pleasure to work with in our MBA program, executive education and training and building up leaders in the soft skills or humanistic approach and her methodology of improv for innovation. So please give a warm welcome to Christine Alexander, who will be warming us up uh, so we're able to uh, execute for the rest of the uh, session. So give Christine a, a big warm welcome. Christine, the Zoom and Teams floor is yours. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody, and good morning. Uh, it's almost noon. Uh, my name is Christine Alexander, and I'm an improv professional. I've been doing it for 20 years, and I'm just going to do a little warm up with you. I see one of you is uh, some of you might be driving at least one, so you don't have to completely do everything I'm asking. Just do it in your brain. So we're going to just do a little uh, physical shakeout. We're going to shake out our body, right? We're going to shake out one arm eight times. And then we're going to do the other arm eight times. And then we're going to do it real slow with our with our heads like this eight times. And then we're going to tap a foot eight times. Then the other foot eight times. And then we're going to start all over, but we're going to cut it in half. Four, 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 two, 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 one, one, one. And if you're lost, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is improv, so whatever you do is absolutely perfect. Um, we're going to count out loud and uh, um, and just be silly with it. Okay, so here we go. Follow me. One, two, one, three, two, four, three, five, four, six, five, seven, four, eight. Seven, one, eight. Two, one, three, two, three, four, three, five, four, six, five, seven, six, eight. Seven, one, two, one, two, two three, three, four, four five, 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 six, seven, seven eight. 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 One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, 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 one, I'm so proud of you for just being silly in that moment. All the people with the cameras off are like, <laughs> I'm so proud of you. So thank you for doing that. So uh, in improv, the number one rule is uh, yes and. We use those two words together. We agree and we add inspiration for our partner. That's how we're successful in front of a paying audience. So we're gonna we're gonna tell a story together. Uh, and Steve. Uh, professor, why don't you name out the next person who's going to tell the story? Okay, so each I'm going to go first uh, and, and give you the premise of the story. And then, Steve, you're going to go second and you're going to say yes and and you're going to fill in your part of the story. And then you're going to say the name of the person who's going next. But that person is going to say yes, but and tell their part of the story. Then the next person will say yes and, then the next person will say yes but, yes and, yes but. And if we make a mistake, we go like this, yay! Because it really doesn't matter, okay? We're just gonna be loose here in this moment. So let's tell a story. Here I go, I'm gonna go to you, Steve, first. So if you wanna keep your microphones on right now, it might be helpful to keep the story moving well. Okay, here we go. Once, uh, just last summer in 2019, I was gifted a cruise to 
go to the Bahamas in the summer? Yes, and we were going to see the greatest rock band of all time, Caitlin. Yes, but. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> <laughs> The rock band has to be a hip hop band. Yes, and Graham. Yes, but that hip hop band was a. Uh... <laughs> 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 I just woke up. Right. Yeah. That hip hop band just woke up. That's right. Now there it is. Let's see the band. Going. We're gonna we're gonna go over to Tyler. Yes, and. Um, yes, and. When the rock band woke up, they had an elephant in their room. Yes, but Nick. Yes, but the elephant was eating pineapple. <laughs> yes. And Alexa. Alexa. Great. Yes. <laughs> <Nobody>. <laughs> <laughs> She's doing great. Yes, and Tyler, or no, excuse me, Spencer. Uh, yes, and pineapple didn't go well with the elephant's stomach. Yes, but the uh, elephant's stomach was, no, that's just going to go weird. So we can stop it right there. Yay! <laughs> Dang, I killed it. Sorry. See? No, we all did. We all yeah. are doing an awesome <laughs> job. It's awesome. So now let's try one more story. Do I have a time? Steve? Yeah. Yes. One more story. This, can you see this? Once upon a time. I'll read them to you as we go. I'm going to tell you the order that we're going to go in. So Graham, Professor, Nick, okay, he's out. <laughs> Graham, Professor, Tyler, then Nick, then Caitlin, then Spencer, Oliver, and Alexa, if we get them in. Okay? So, Perfect. can I say first? Okay, so once upon a time, there was a happy old man named John Joe. And every day, John Joe would spread his wisdom with USF students. Tyler, until one day. Until one day, he tripped and fell. Nick, and because of that. And because of that, he broke both legs. <laughs> Caitlin, and because of that. And because of that, he had to learn to walk again. Spencer. What is it? Sorry, I don't know. What does it say? What is, oh, yeah, it's and okay. Oh, and because of that, um, he'll he has to learn how to play different sports now. Sorry. Graham. <laughs> You're perfect, Graham, until I, uh, and because until of that, finally. he should have had life alert. Perfect. Tyler, until finally. Until finally. There was no more John. Oh, and every day since then. Uh, and every day since then, he has been a competitive wheelchair racer. <laughs> I love that storyline because there's eight parts to it, which means you have an eighth of the responsibility of that story when you're a team of eight. That's awesome. So... Hi, my name's Christine Alexander. It's been fun being here. Unless you need, you, would you like another game? Because I have plenty. <laughs> I mean, I'm open to it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One more. Be opposed. And then, All right. And I'll let's... do a recap of how these plot apply to the work and projects and skills that we're we're, we're utilizing <clears throat> in class. Because these are not just random. There's direct connection between the themes and the skills that we're learning in these exercises to what we're doing in class. And these are different approaches to learning these soft skills. So back to you, Christine. Well, if you want to be a good listener, this is one of the games that you want to play. This is called last word, first word. I'm going to say a sentence. My last word is going to be professor's first word. Okay, wait, let me go. We all see this the way it is. Nick, Professor, Graham, Tyler, Caitlin, Spencer. You don't see it like that? No, that's not okay. Much. The it's order that we were in before is perfect. So it was Graham, Tyler, Nick. I don't know. I'll just scream out your name. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Zoom and Teams. 
Yay! <laughs> okay, so everybody understands. Last word, first word. Okay. Um, yesterday, I found out that I am a new owner of a tree. Wait, so it'd be last word tree, first yes. word yesterday? Last, so tree is your first word to okay. any, anything you want to say. Okay, so uh, that tree was a big oak tree, and uh, it happened to grow apples on it somehow. <laughs> Very it, tasty honey crisp apples. <laughs> crisp apples? Yes. <laughs> crisp apples are really good, and you put them in smoothies. You can, like, cut the skin off them, and, like, they're just really delicious either way you cut it. Why would you cut it? <laughs> it, Caitlin. So it, it, um, it's great to slice up apples and dip them in peanut butter. And peanut butter also goes really good with smoothies. <laughs> Yay! Did we do it? I feel like I, I don't know if I'm seeing everybody on the screen. <laughs> Smoothies. Yes. My students are always chill. <laughs> I could hear it coming out of you. I did the sign <laughs> language. <teacher. laughs> um, I knew that was coming. Did you Alexa, see can you hear us? Oliver? My yes. Alexa is not talking to me. Oh, <laughs> did you see what happened, Graham, with you and, and Tyler? I love that the most because, Graham, you weren't confident in, in finishing your sentence. And so Tyler was like, is that the word? Oh, wait, is that the word? <laughs> is, that the word? is that the word? So it, you can tell, Tyler, like you really want to put on that listening um, skill because really when we're in conversation, a lot of times you're just waiting for the other person to stop moving their lips so you can start talking. So this is a great way to hear every single word that they say. And when you go to the second level, you want to wait for the last letter of the last word to use as your first letter of your first word in the sentence. Right? Let's try that one time. Can we try that one time? You believe me. Want to try last let last last letter, first letter, professor? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Caitlin, do you want to just uh give me a sentence of how you feel about uh, uh USF? I feel that USF is a great university for um, research. Research. Wait, so I want to start with a word that starts with R? Research. So the very last letter of research oh, it's the last is letter. H. Yeah. Yes. H. How much research do we need for this project? That is something we'll find out at the end of this class. Class. Tyler. Um, oh, man. <laughs> uh, starting with this class. Our professor is teaching us very many useful skills. Skills, Nick. So that we can get jobs after graduation. Yeah, excellent. Graduation, Spencer. Um, and not all of the jobs that we will be able to get will be around forever. Forever, Oliver. Right now, jobs are evolving, and there will be innovative jobs in the future. Future Alexa? Maybe that's actually Alexa. Like you said, Steve, you know, your Alexa is talking. Maybe this is her. <laughs> that was awesome! Yeah. Did you... I... You guys, I just gave you like gold, like my gold gold. No, I've got more. 
That was so fun. Thank you for having me. Let's give Christine a big round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a so great day. Say, bye. You might say, what do these skills of improv have to do with entrepreneurship, innovation, and creativity? But in fact, we find out that many of these skills can be used in many concepts, frameworks, and, and approaches that we've learned. Certainly brainstorming. How can you build off of someone's ideas if you're cutting them down by saying, but, and judging them? The idea of not being non-judgmental, the idea of building off of people's ideas is the same as yes and. Can you do that without listening? In fact, there is a very, very uh, famous approach for interviewing, and that is through listening and awareness, and that's using the first word of the last word that the interviewer is, is stating. Uh, in addition to that, that can be combined within uh, convergent and divergent thinking, a form of collaboration, a form of better teamwork and group work, uh, a, a way of, of, of conceptualizing, making the complex uh, simple, uh, a way of, of, of building teamwork, a way of, of a high efficiency team. Um, on top of that, uh, the idea of collaboration. So these are just some, or storytelling. We, we learned that the story spine, you know, once upon a time, because of that, because of that, is one form of story. We do that and utilize that in our projects. We utilize that in how we play to people. So we can start seeing there's many concepts that we learn through improv that can be applied to entrepreneurship, innovation, creativity, and I would say management in general. So with that being said, as a good warm up, we're now focused, right? Like a team, like a game day, like sports, like professional, whatever. You have to be in the, the mindset when you're ready to compete, when you want to digest, when you want to focus. And that's what we were doing there with, with improv. So next, I would like to welcome our guest, Nick Price. Nick is a trailblazer, an alum of the Entrepreneurship and Innovation Program, one who's left a trail of breadcrumbs for us to follow. He is walking in the shoes several feet above, uh, uh, beyond us and, and, and allowing us to kind of easily reach a path or we'll say, you know, follow this path that's already been made for us and this through this trials and tribulations and he's come to share some, some thoughts, uh, some wisdom and maybe to give us some advice on how we can take our next steps now before we graduate in the next few months. So Nick, thank you for making time uh, to be with us uh, today. First, I would like to ask if you could just maybe get us up to speed on what you've been doing since you graduated and kind of fill us in. If you guys, maybe if you feel comfortable, you want to, um, Nick, are you there? Can you hear us? Oops, someone must have just dropped. Oh, the marshals. Oh, okay. Nick, can you hear us? I think we just lost Nick. We gave Marshall though. <laughs> we got Mark. Yeah, can you hear me? Sorry. Yeah, or Nick. Welcome. <laughs> I was talking to my haircut, but the lady didn't come. You seem to have lost. Uh, Nick. That being said, while Nick tries to find his way back to the meeting room, Nick graduated a few years ago and he has a unique story about the idea of enrolling in a pitch competition. And we have a few here at USF and how that changed his perspective and his career trajectory and path. And when he gets back, I hope uh, one of the questions we ask him will be him sharing that story. But now he's a combination of running his uh, own initiatives, projects, and learning from experienced people in the field that he, he finds himself. Um, and I can't speak and say enough about the alumni that have graduated uh, from this program. It's a tight niche of individuals. And if you walk down Central, you will easily find five, six, seven, maybe 12 businesses that were created from people in this entrepreneurship program who've touched it, have been deeply engaged in the club, et cetera. So you guys are not alone. And if you want to connect with them, and you remember, if you're looking for advice, funding, connections, and networking, they have a lot of that built in. But it's up to you to make that effort to connect. It's up to you to build that and secure those, those relationships. And that takes time. And that's one reason why I like to invite alumni into uh, this, um, the course and having this live session because of this. You know, I think there's a way 
to build these connections, uh, even if we are out doing our own thing, out working our jobs, out innovating, creating our businesses, which many of you are. So don't think because we're not in the classroom, we can't network, we can't build, we can't have co-curricular activities. And that's why I want to have these types of events. Oh yeah, Someone if I could chime in, uh, I was just gonna add, um, I just like agree with your statement about networking. And uh, you said our guest speaker is doing, uh, he did startup events, correct? Yes. Yeah, so I would say like going to startup events, I've gone to my fair share of those. They're a lot of fun, but the, also they're like incredibly good for networking. And I would definitely recommend anyone in this class to go to them. Good. In fact, I think this week is, or next week is Tampa Bay Startup Week. It's all virtual. Um, we have St. Pete Pitch Night. That's happening on the 21st. You know, so there, that, and plus we already had the incubator um, applications. Plus we had the Florida Blue uh, Design Challenge. So what you guys are doing in class with these design challenges you know, are exactly what happens in these startup weeks and these, these hackathons, et cetera. And that's what we're preparing you for, how to take an idea, create value for it, get people around it and resources and plan the next steps. So someone joined with a 727-453-2165. I probably shouldn't have said that publicly, but. Uh, Giving out my who, phone who, number? Yeah. It's me, okay. Nick. Yeah, it's me. Great. I, Great. I don't know okay. what happened. I'm I'm in Temple Terrace now, so I just kind of lost service. No, no worries. Uh, would you be able to share? So right before you, you dropped out, I want I asked you if you could bring us up to speed on what you've been doing since you graduated. Yeah, no problem. Um, it, and I just kind of heard that last little piece of um, what you guys were talking about, where uh, you think that startup events hold value for people. And they, I would definitely agree, um, not only because I'm an organizer in, in quite a bit of those events, but I started doing those events back in like 2012, I think was my first time I went. Um, and ever since then, my kind of my my entrepreneurial journey exploded. Um, and so to, to give you guys kind of a background about what I do now and what I've done in the past. Um, in 2012, they started doing this thing called uh, pitch. It was like, uh, do you remember what it was called, Steve? Some kind of pitch event for the school. It wasn't like a startup event because Startup Weekend still really hadn't gotten legs and Startup Week wasn't even a thing. So like, uh, I can't remember exactly what it was called, but I wanna say it was just a, a pitch night put on by the school. Um, and I ended up going there and doing that pitch night with a business idea that we came up with in the new venture creation class. And I ended up winning. And then I went on to the Southeastern Entrepreneurial Conference got third place and then said, well, man, maybe I got a business here. Um, and then, you know, throughout my, my journey at USF, basically every class that I took in the entrepreneurship program was centered around my business. So I took that business from new venture creation, launched it, you know, turned it into a legitimate business. Um, at one point I had 11 employees and we did eco-friendly uh, auto detailing. And we built an app and did all that stuff, um, kind of the Uber for car washes, if you will. Um, but the whole time that I was at USF, they really allowed me to focus on that business that I was building in the classes, which allowed me, one, to have an easier you know, time in school because I don't really care for school. Um, not, not, I, I understand what it did for me now. But back then, like school wasn't the thing for me, you know, going out and hustling and trying to make more money is the thing that I like to do the most. Um, and so I kind of took that as a, oh, wow, well, I can still do my classwork and work on my business and really kill two birds with one stone. And it ended up being much better than that because I was really able to like dive in and have my peers look at my business from the outside um, and really use a lot of these skill sets and things that uh, Steve is teaching you guys um, in class and then outside of the classroom in business. Um, I don't remember what your question was, Steve, but that's my my background um, 
through the USF program, but uh, now I am uh, person number three at a startup in St. Pete called Docs Living, and we do uh, co-living. So it's very similar to co-working, if you guys are familiar with that. Um, and we just kind of take pre-existing single-family homes and reshape the way that people live and connect inside the home. So instead of having like a 2,500 square foot, four bedroom, five bath, you have an eight bedroom, eight bath where everyone has their own private access. And it's the, the living situation is more focused on the connection and the community rather than, you know, having a nice plush bedroom to live in, even though the bedrooms are very nice. Um, and I'm the head of development there. So right now I'm doing uh, six new construction projects from the ground up. And then we have three rehabs and we're trying to scale out and raise some money. So that's kind of what I do now. Um, I've been, I ran startup bus last year, which is a 72 hour hackathon and you get 30 people on a bus, build a business in 72 hours, pitch it on stage in front of a room full of investors and um, your peers. And it's really just a, it's a test at what you can do in 72 hours because everyone thinks like, oh, you know, you know, it's going to take me a year to get my business off the ground. Well, I can tell you very much that I've seen people build them in 72 hours and go on to be billion dollar evaluations because one of the, the startup bus companies is Instacart. So if you ever go to Publix and you see Instacart, just know that that was a startup bus company. Great, great examples, and I'm happy to that you're sharing your journey and how the connection of what we're doing in the classroom relates to and translates to uh, the real world. Last time we met as a class, we, we talked about 10 skills that we were learning in our scalability class, our creativity and innovation class, and our student consulting and design thinking class. And one of the skills is this idea of being better at research or research skills. Mm -hmm. I would like to ask you, where does research fall in and is it important or how do you utilize it? And, and you know, where does it translate uh, to yeah. your, your world or in practice? Well, yeah, I mean, research is definitely one of the top things that I do. Um, that's pretty much how I find out everything that I need to know. So um, a lot of Times I'm put in situations where I have no experience or no knowledge of the situation, right? And then I have to go from having nothing to figuring out how to solve the problem at hand. Um, so that's where research comes in really big for me. Um, and a lot of those things, you know, I'm sure if you guys are, are tech savvy at all, like you understand that you can find quick information on the internet and you can get like, okay, reputable sources that's fine for solving quick problems right but when you're raising money or you're um really trying to like pitch a business idea to just get it off the ground and running you need like really credible sources um so thankfully at usf you guys have a whole bunch of uh, research database capabilities i i can't remember what they're all called but like ibis world i think is one of them um and then I, I just like to find like third party research firms out there because they do a lot, a lot of research and they're much better at it than you or me. Um, and that's usually how I find most of my stuff, especially when it comes to raising money. Like when you're raising money, you really need to have like real deal stats, um, especially in real estate. And then um, we have another business that's getting ready to uh, launch that's going through its initial seed fund. And that one is um, all like home services. So being able to provide real data to these people to show like the growth of uh, the HVAC industry, the electric electricity industry, all these different industries, you know, you can go and do a quick search on, uh, find a bunch of stuff, but you really need to pull reputable uh, sources for your research, especially if you're raising money because you know, when you go to the, the table to raise money for a business, like people are going to pick your presentation apart. They're going to pick your pitch deck apart. They're going to pick you apart. So you really need to be like ironclad on all your on, on all your stats, data, information like that. Um, 
Good. And that's really uh, this leads this leads me into my second question because a perfect segue. You talked about a pitch deck and presentation. One thing that's yep. deeply embedded in all my courses is the idea of presenting, creating a pitch deck, and honing that through many iterations. So they probably have to present four times per course on yeah. a boot camp style innovation challenge. Where else or how do you go about practicing or what role does presenting and your pitch deck play in all of this? Well, for me personally, I'm the pitch guy, right? So, I mean, this is kind of what I do um, in terms of business stuff is when we have a team, most of them don't want to go up and talk in front of people. So I'm always the one that's getting pushed to be up in front of everyone and everything like that. So for me, having something that's really, really tight for any kind of presentation, right? Whether it's, if it's going to the table to raise money or it's doing a, a hackathon or whatever it is, I want to make sure that whatever I'm presenting comes off the pitch deck really well too. So that's another thing that, I mean, just by doing it, you learn it. Um, but like my pitch decks now have like, like barely any words on them. You know, it, if it has words on them, it's showing market data or, you know, it's the title slide, you know, most of it's just kind of pictures and other stuff. And then I'm leading the story through my pitch. So the pitch deck is completely different than the pitch, right? The deck is just a, a way to run someone through the story that you're telling and then have visual things that show what you're actually explaining. And then the pitch itself is really where your it's your sales pitch, right? So if you're doing, um, I mean, eventually when you transition out of college and go find jobs, I mean, you're going to be pitching yourself to the job. So it's kind of, it, it's good to know, or if you start your own business, you're going to be pitching your business every single day, no matter who you talk to, no matter if it's a lady at the grocery store or if it's the, the bank teller or your mom and dad, you're going to, we call it always be pitching. Um, and you know, there's a famous line called always be closing, but uh, you can't close if you don't pitch. So um, that's kind of where it runs in my life. I mean, we just stayed up the other night to put together a pitch deck to raise money for the service company. So, you know, I'm, I'm now 30 um, and I'm still building pitch decks and um, slide decks and all that. Good. One of the other challenges or we'll say skills that the students embedded in my courses are, are practicing is this idea of problem identification. And within mm -hmm. the management field, this is an important skill for all levels of the organization, but also for entrepreneurs and innovators. Um, sometimes we feel that the problem is evident or easy to understand, but in fact, it's through the data and through the research uh, that we clearly identify the problem. Have you had any experience or wh what experience do you have when, when you're trying to go about solving a problem and first the importance or what is the importance of identifying the correct problem? Well, I would say that, yes, I have plenty of experience in that. Um, I almost, my job title is almost creative problem solver, right? Because that's all I do is try to find solutions to problems that pop up and arise. Um, sometimes problems are more, problems are interesting because there's, there's a problem like you're talking about in this scenario where it's where, do, how do we find the problem? So you're trying to identify like what's the pain point, right? So what is that actual pain point that your end consumer or your, your end user is having? That's your problem. Um, and you can find that through research. But I think the best way to find real pain points with like an end customer is to start interviewing the customers, right? Because that's where you're going to find the best data. Granted, it's going to be a smaller subset than if you're looking at online data, but if you start by doing, you know, surveys and stuff like that and really, really getting the end user's problem and pain point, then you can go back to the drawing table and really identify what that problem is. And then, like, you know, you have little problems that pop up every day, like, uh, you know, 
for me, it's like the electrician didn't show up or the plumber didn't show up or somebody didn't show up. We got to pivot and find a solution to get things done to meet a deadline and things like that. And that's just uh, those type of problems. I feel like a lot of times people get scared that the, the solution to a simple problem is a complex solution. And usually it's a complex problem with a simple solution. So that that would be my piece of advice. If you're if you're identifying problems, just remember that usually the problem is super complex to that person, and it's so overwhelming. But the answer is something so simple. So if you look in the data, because data data doesn't lie, right? It's like when they when they explain stock trading and and forex trading and things like that. You look left to see what's happening in the past. It's the same thing with data. You want to look back at in the time because data usually doesn't lie. Um, I don't know how true that will be moving forward into this new uh, technological era that we're going into. But as of right now, most of the times data doesn't lie. And you can usually solve a problem from data. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing that the role of primary data. Not only are students in my class expected to go to find secondary data and third party resource resources for research, but they're also expected to dive into primary sources. And part of your project is to what? Go out and interview users or customers or stakeholders to understand their perspective or to do a survey. This is why you're getting your feet wet with this primary data because it's different than historic or past data. It's observable, it's present, it could be in real time. And there's a different value to that data uh, or learning how to, to do research and primary research. So thank you for sharing that, Nick. Uh, last yeah, no question, problem. if la last question, uh, would you have any other advice or wisdom uh, before we wrap up uh, at least uh, this segment of the, the session with you? Maybe, maybe there's some words that you want to share or, or direction, or if you could tell yourself, um, uh, as a, you know, go back in time and what would you tell yourself as a junior or freshman or sophomore or senior or whatever, when you were at uni, what would you, what would you, what advice would you have for your, your younger self at that time? Oh, wow. Uh, well, I mean, I was a, <laughs> I was a freshman 12 years ago, so I would probably say go to class, you dumbass. But uh, <laughs> if, if, if I had to give you more suggestions um, on things to just think about one, I would, I would highly suggest, um, I know that that virtual startup week is coming up. I would highly suggest just signing up. I, it should be free. Um, yeah. And just, and going online and just like watching what's going on in the community. And then I would say like, if you really want to be in entrepreneurship and be an entrepreneur or whatever you want to call it, a business owner, um, just get out in the community. I know that's kind of hard to say in, covid times because you know there's so many restrictions on whatever um but i would say get out in your community and and really network um and and try things and don't be scared to fail because you know the only way that you're going to learn how to do it the right way is to do it the wrong way and once you do it the wrong way you won't do it the wrong way again so get out there try it meet people ask questions ask lots of questions. Um, that would be my advice is just get out in the community, ask questions, try things. Don't be scared to fail. Don't be scared to try. Um, you know, all these guys that are super successful entrepreneurs, they didn't get there by not failing. They failed more times than they, they succeeded. They succeeded that one time after a thousand failures. So that would be my suggestion. And, and, and really like understand that there's a lot of stress that comes with being an entrepreneur, but it will not hurt you. It can't hurt you. It won't harm you. And if you start to feel stressed and overwhelmed with whatever you're working on, just remember that it, it does not have more power over the, you. And you just take a deep breath and you'll be right back to normal. Excellent. Thank you, Nick, for sharing your day with us. I'm proud of you and the other alums that are paving the way for this cohort as they go forward. I have no doubt. We have uh, uh, people following in your footsteps in the next couple of years. Please stay in touch. Always love having you in class. Uh, let's give Nick a big round of applause virtually. We do this or thank you. Uh, 
Um, Thanks, I'll Thank follow you. up with you uh, in the near future, Nick. Yeah, and, and Steve, be, you can pass out my phone number and email to anybody that wants to connect with me. I'm happy to connect and answer any questions or just chat, whatever. Wonderful. This is a great invitation, guys. Uh, people willing to help and walk side by side with you or to share knowledge, expertise, networking, whatever. So, you know, I don't think it can get better than that. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, guys. All right. I'm going to hop. I'll see you. Okay. Wonderful. So hopefully we were able to take some advice and, and wisdom of how things and what we're doing in the classroom directly relates to what's happening out there in industry. And this is one type of example and one individual who's deeply connected to the community, who's walked in the, our shoes before, who's created this path, who can make our lives easier and hopefully we can see these direct translations of the skills that we're learning in class and how it can help us in the future. So um, I'm going to stop the recording, then we can pivot to our projects. But I thought that was excellent.